Welcome to the Erasmus Foundation podcast. My name is Paul Nugent. Are you looking for answers to life and its meaning? Then this may well be the very podcast you need to listen to. In a series of podcasts, we are going to look at the difficult questions of life and apply spiritual knowledge to find out the answers. Hello. Today we're going to ask a big question. Should we be blaming God, or as we call him in the foundation, the great mind, for all the ills and difficulties that mankind faces on this planet? I have three people with me today to discuss this. Marie, Corinne, and Julia. And we'll start with Marie. This is a big question, isn't it, Marie? What do you think about this one? It's a very interesting question, Paul. I heard it so often, even in a shop where two ladies were talking and said, you know, if there was a God, why does he allow all of this? And I'm going back to the 90s. But I think people ought to look at themselves. Why is those things happening? People don't know themselves well enough. They don't understand that we are living in the university of life that the great mind has created. And this university of life is also part of our natural law, the great mind has created. And it is there, it is all around us, it is all within us that the great mind has created for us. So the thing we have to be is thankful to the great mind that we are here. And all these ups and downs which are going into life, what would we learn if there was no ups and down? What would we learn? Not much. So all this event is really for our progress. So what we're saying then is the difficulties that mankind face is for a reason. Is that correct, Corinne? Would you say that's true? Uh, yes, Paul, really. Uh, we've got individual tapestries as it, ex it has been already explained in the previous podcasts. And these tapestries, as a blueprint for, for a life we choose, they have got tests. And, and these tests are really there to help us to evolve. Now, all these individual tapestries are sort of matching in an overall tapestry, which is a big tapestry, a big plan for humanity, for the world. And this time is really a very special time on the earth because it is the end of a civilization. And Today, the tests are being very important and the difficulties are very, very big. Now, we know of the pandemic. We know of the climate change. And really, when we look at it, as some people have been looking at it lately with this uh, COP26 in Glasgow, really the scientists are saying that man is responsible for these difficulties and for the consequences of our behavior collectively. Now, seen with the eyes of spirit, it is a time that is uh, that the great mind is giving to men and and women of course the opportunity to mature to grow to grow even further and so this is a very important time that is in a way offered to us by the great mind to go through as difficult as it may be. Okay, so Julia, um, 
Let me just say first of all, although it's the end of uh, the fifth civilization, that means hopefully that it will be the beginning of the sixth civilization, which I'm sure will come to at some stage. But the point is with this, Julia, would you say it's more about our spiritual progression, not our physical needs and requirements. It, 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 is, it is the spiritual outcome that is more important than our physical outcome. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, the reason we take a life is to progress spiritually. And I think part of the problem of these times is that the spiritual side of us, the spiritual part of us, has been diminished. It's been overshadowed by the physical world. So anything that is spiritual, the values from spirit, are really not in evidence. And I think this is why we see the state of our world as it is. Um, the world is out of balance, and it is out of balance because of mankind. I think people blame others, God, or someone or something, when perhaps they might be a little afeard, they don't understand something. And I think we might see this blame, especially attributed to God, in the coming few years, because we know there's going to be a lot of changes, some events which are going to be quite dramatic, are going to be very difficult for everybody on the world. So I feel that there might be more of this. We will hear more of this. And I think until perhaps we've gone through a few more years of change, and really start to recognize that perhaps we've had some responsibility in bringing our world to this state, we perhaps will find that people will want to blame something or someone. But as we understand a little bit more about what has happened, and hopefully at the same time get a little bit stronger in ourselves, and I mean spiritually stronger, we might be able to face the questions and indeed the answers, and then maybe take some responsibility for putting the world back to order. But I think at the moment it is difficult because people won't understand enough yet of why these things are happening. But I do believe that in time this understanding will come. And I also feel that the great mind has planned this and is in control of this because he wants his children, us, all of us, to learn. And I think the best way to learn is slowly. I think we're not always very patient on the earth, but to spirit and to the great mind, it doesn't really matter how soon or when exactly we might learn and come to a point where we can perhaps move on to the sixth civilization. I think it is important that we learn in a meaningful way so that the lessons really do sink in and that we don't have to return to these lessons at a future time. So I think over these coming years and even after this seven-year period that we've spoken about, there'll be a lot for people to learn and understand and come to a point where they recognise the responsibility that they have. And at that point, perhaps a bit of healing and a bit of repair can be done to our world. Okay, Julia, lots of things there. Um, Marie, now, so what we've said so far, that it, God isn't to blame. Man is to blame. Man has made his own mess, and God has allowed him to do this. So what has man done, do you think, to make such a mess? Well, it is, yes, as you say, as uh, Julia and Corinne had said, is that it is really us, human, who have created all that mess. It's a lack of responsibility. And yet, you know, responsibility was learned when we were at home. We are now in a world of uh, materialism. You know, you look at it now and uh, people are just uh, don't have any respect don't have respect for others, for the human being, don't have respect for the animals, don't have respect for nature, don't have respect for the earth. And uh, we cannot be surprised of what is happening now. 
the climate change is here. And the uh, COP26 actually is not working. It will not work because not everybody is um, working together or prepared to actually do something to help. There is a lot of falsehood. Now, truth is the key of the natural law. Today, people are prepared to give falsehood to gain anything, which is really very sad. Thank you, Marie. And so I think that's the word that needs to be brought into focus, truth. Yeah. I really think we cannot trust our fellow man, can we? Do you think that's true, Corinne? We just don't seem to be able to trust our neighbours. We have to have everything down in writing, signed and sealed and, you know, and photographs and everything just to prove who we are. No one trusts anyone else. What do you think about that? Yes, uh, Paul, it is really true and, and it is really sad because um, nowadays it has almost become a, a habit uh, for people to, to lie. And, well, what is behind all these lies quite often is the power of money, I'm afraid. And certainly, as Marie-France has said, um, if the people in charge did not take the right decisions at the last uh, COP26, it is because of financial and economical reasons. And it seems that today money is the ruler. And for money, some people are really ready to, to lie to others. Lying in, in, in commerce is common and something which is really sad. As you said, if, if you sign a contract, you, you need to read what is written um, with very, very little letters. You need to put your glasses on and, and be very careful. So, yes, it, in many ways, it is, it is a problem. And it is perhaps, I am believing, a reason why the great mind is allowing us to go through this, perhaps in the end, men and women can learn the value of truth and what is falsehood. Perhaps so that men and women could learn what is good and what is evil, to learn respect. So certainly in the, in the great mind's plan, all these things have got a good reason for us to learn to appreciate the real values like truth, honor, respect. Yes, that's the other word I was thinking of, respect. Not only respect for others, but respect for your planet. And I think respect for yourself. What would you say to that, Julia? Absolutely, I agree. I think self-respect should perhaps come first. And the way to get to self-respect, I believe, is to get to know yourself, which I know has been discussed on another podcast. But I think the way the world is at the moment does make that very difficult. It's a bit of a vicious circle, really. Um, I mean, we, we all hear the stories in the news of the mental health crisis, a lot of people are finding life very, very difficult. And if people had a good solid foundation of truth about themselves, understood themselves fully, so that they did have that self-respect, then I think that would naturally and automatically take them to do respecting their fellow men and women and the natural world around them. And I think perhaps also they would more naturally give truth. I think any flaw that anybody had would be more easily tackled if they had that self-knowledge and self-respect. Because I think that shows that you have a little bit of spiritual strength, that you have surfaced, and you do need strength to have the courage 
to be truthful about yourself, about others, and about our world. Indeed. And so there's no such thing as a white lie then, Julia, before we move on. No, no, absolutely not. To, to me, and I think what we believe here in the foundation, any lie, whatever colour, whatever shade, however damaging it might be, a lie is a lie. And any lie is against the natural law. With the natural law, we should be truthful. And that is just not happening. It's happening in very, very small ways. The majority of what we see and hear, I believe, is false. And it reflects our sad world at the moment. Marie, what does man need to do now? What does man need to do to sort all this out, do you think? I think we are all at the, the same thought that man has to examine himself and, and even write down our strengths and our weakness. And, you know, man, if he was actually looking at this, he might be able to see what is done wrong. But I think, Paul, if a human being is doing something against the natural law, he actually knows the truth is is true. A falsehood is invented. So a man, a woman, would know when they are actually lying. As much as they want to try to hide it, they would know. Sadly, we're going to go, as, a, as a Julia and Corinne say, into a, a very hard time. And this is when people are going to sit and reflect. Yes. Yes. I think a lot of good points, uh, Marie. I really think that Truth, respect, responsibility, all these words, all positive words, and all necessary. But I think one of the biggest things for me is understanding that everyone is living their own tapestry. And we need to respect other people's tapestries, don't we? Do you think, Corinne? Yes, Paul, uh, absolutely. We, As I said at the beginning, we all have got our own tapestry and others as well. And, of course, we need to respect other people's tapestries to accept the way they are, to accept their flaws, and to accept uh, whatever might be on, on their tapestries. And even if at first sight we would not really appreciate it, it has got a, a reason and something quite important. All these tapestries have been prepared by the great mind with a reason, with a purpose. So it is very important to remind it because sometimes a person can be doing things and Usually, and perhaps because of some religion uh, background, we may judge it as not good. But who knows if in the eyes of the great mind, what this person is doing is just following a tapestry that was prepared, especially for that person to do these things. And Perhaps it is serving the plans of the great mind. So really, we should have respect for all tapestries. Yes. And after that, Julia, I think the bottom line really is we come to the end of our podcast this time, is the spirit behind the life that is the important thing, isn't it? Absolutely. Um, the spirit is what is of value and, and lives on at the end of a life. The spirit is what retains the experience of the life and perhaps a little wisdom as well. So that is the most important. And just listening to Karina Marie, I was just thinking also um, in these coming years that I think it's, it's good if people can realise that they teach the most by example 
because sometimes we've had people come here and they've sort of listened and thought about what's going on in the world and thought, well, you know, what can I do? And we can all do something. As Corinne said, we all have a purpose. So I think if we can just be ourselves, do the best we can, and maybe we can help others just by the way we are and share our knowledge. And this will help in our small way as a part of the Great Minds overall tapestry. Yes, indeed. Would anybody else like to say anything before we come to an end this time? People think of blaming the the Great Mind, but I would rather thank the Great Mind and say how grateful I am because I am deeply believing that at the present time, if things were not under his control, it could be really perhaps the end of the earth because man is really strong in destroying his planet. And Spirit has told us, and I am deeply believing this, that the great mind and spirit are really putting a lot of energy and doing a very big work to sustain this planet and and to keep it alive, really. And so we should rather be really grateful to the great mind to let us collectively go through these experiences and for all the help we receive from spirit during this difficult time. Because yes, life is very difficult for men, women, and the children. It's very difficult for children at the present time. But we are not alone. And spirit is really not far from us. And they are doing all their best to help us. The Erasmus Foundation is a spiritual teaching and healing centre based in Laxfield, Suffolk, in the United Kingdom. We have a web page, www.erasmus-foundation.org or email us, info at erasmus-foundation.org. Thank you for listening.